how did you know you first start getting into working um, in the athletic side of the business? Yeah, so uh, gosh, I'll start all the way back in, uh, let's see, I was about nine or ten years old, and uh, I was really into professional wrestling, uh, WCW, Diamond Dallas Page, The Giant, all those guys. And uh, my grandfather and my dad took me to Stabler Arena up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and uh, that was the first time I actually heard and saw the roar of a crowd. So um, I knew I wanted to be where the people were, you know, hang out and, and get to bring that kind of enjoyment to people's faces. Uh, fast forward to high school, I realized in the book I was reading that you could major in sports management. Uh, and so I knew, you know, sports facilities, that's where I needed to be. So uh, I, uh, I applied to USC in Columbia, went to school there for four years and, and got involved. Um, took my first job at Colonial Life Arena, worked there for about six months. Uh, went on to St. Louis at St. Louis University's Chaffetz Arena and did operations there. And then uh, got promoted to Aiken to handle events and operations here back in 2012. Been here ever since. So um, talk to us about what, what you do with that company. Yeah, so the company I worked for was Global Spectrum. Uh, it's now called Spectrum Venue Management. It's uh, located up in Philadelphia. They, uh, it was one of the subsidiaries of Comcast. So they would uh, manage stadiums and arenas all over the country. Uh, they were the, the managing partner at Colonial Life Arena back when I was in school. Uh, so I worked in the ticket office. And anywhere I could be around facilities and, and sports and uh, getting, getting people out, that's where I was. So uh, basically went to, um, you know, uh, six months after that, got promoted to St. Louis. They managed the building out there. Uh, and, and the company was really good to me. Uh, was able to move me around, get me some experience, and that's, uh, that's where I'm at today. What all have you done at USA again during that time? Because it seems like you've taken a, a lot of different roles. Gosh, uh, so much. Um, you know, it all started with just uh, the Convocation Center, you know, making sure events were running smoothly, well-managed, that kind of thing. Uh, anywhere from a basketball game to an expo to a, uh, you know, a VIP wedding reception. I mean, all, all kinds of things. Uh, so that's where I started, basically just being the, uh, the liaison between the building and our clients. And then as time's progressed and I've, I've been able to move up, I've taken on more of a booking role with the, the Convocation Center as well as uh, the different athletic facilities that are here on campus, whether it's uh, Satcher Field at softball, Roberto Hernandez Stadium down at baseball, Pacer Pit. Um, you know, b between booking and then also uh, any other aspects of facility management, making sure you know, the grass is, is cut and then that we've got enough people taking care of that through maintenance, um, double checking and making sure all you know, the services are being taken care of and that our athletes are having the best experience they can at any one of our facilities. So that's, that's where I've been moving to. So talk about like a little bit of like a, a crazy turnaround time that you've had. A Golly. Um, there, there have. So, uh, so yeah, that was always kind of the mantra um, throughout sports management and being, you know, being in the business is that when everybody else is having fun, you're working. So uh, you know, I can remember countless times of me being in the building, you know, late at night. Uh, everybody else is going out for drinks on Friday night, and I'm making sure the building's ready for Saturday morning. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So crazy time that we flipped the building. Uh, I remember in particular, uh, I want to believe it was last year we had the Chamber of Commerce had their annual dinner. Uh, late January. They have it late January every year. And usually it works out that there's not a basketball game uh, the next day on Saturday. So they have it the last Friday in January. Uh, but last year just so happens that I think we played UNC Pembroke or somebody on the last Saturday in January. And, uh, and so Friday night we had a banquet for about 500 people. 482 I think was the final number. But uh, we had to flip that entirely the night of so that we had time or practice, uh, sorry, for shoot arounds the next morning. So um, yeah, that was, that was crazy. Uh, and then even um, some other times, we actually have, uh, there's a church service, I think, this time on Sunday. We do a, a day of service, the combo through Student Life and uh, the, uh, the NAACP, Remembering the Life of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. So um, that was actually on that Sunday. So we went chamber dinner, basketball Saturday, Martin Luther King Sunday, and it was just, you know, all credit to my staff that helps me when, when we have to do things like that and supervise the building. Uh, you know, they came in, they, they didn't complain, they just got their nose to the, nose to the grindstone and, and got it done, and that's, that's what you got to do, you know, just get the work done. And you're also a family man, so how do you, how are you able to balance, you know, that with, with you know, your family? Yeah, no, it's, it's tough at times. You know, Amber, thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Uh, and, and taking care of the kids while I'm up late and, and over here working. But, you know, it's all about balance um, and striking that balance with, 
you know, with you know your partner and, and what's going on, especially when it comes to family life. Um, you know, we we've we've tried to to strike that balance, and uh, you know, obviously having kids, they like to come out to the to the arena, and they know where daddy works and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it can get tough. You know, a lot of the the flips night after night, like that night, the one I talked about earlier, where it was three days in a row, that was particularly taxing. But uh, um, but no, it's it's all just about you know trying to keep it fun and, and trying to strike that balance and let you know be there for the kids and the wife and, and things like that. So. We've seen you on the broadcast. Have, you know, talk a little about that, and do you enjoy doing this? Yeah, gosh, I I really do enjoy uh, the broadcasts. Um, something I did in college uh, because this was before all the streaming services were available. I'm a big Pittsburgh Penguins fan, and so I would listen to uh, Mike Lang on the broadcast every night because uh, that's all we could get was the radio broadcast, and it was free on, on the Penguins website. So I'd bring it up and listen to it, and just the way that. Uh, that a, a radio broadcaster can kind of craft the uh, the sporting event that they're watching, so that people, even though they're not in the facility or, or watching it live on TV, they can actually see, you know, in their mind's eye what's going on. And I, I've always felt that that was pretty interesting, and uh, and something that I try to think about when doing the radio calls or, or the the YouTube calls. Um, but I enjoy it. I enjoy you know the the different aspects of it, and and just talking about the game and, and a lot trying to let people that are watching uh, get a perspective of somebody that's actually in the facility. But tell me about one of the, one of your favorite moments that you've you've had since you've been here. Oh gosh, um, you know the the winning the region tournaments uh, the first couple of years was pretty cool. Uh, the uh, the the shot, um, the the one of the first couple the first Augusta University game that I was here for in 2013. Uh, one of the sponsors was giving away a car, and uh, I was actually on the baseline. You can see it on YouTube. But I had to be the one measuring to make sure the half court line was right next to where the baseline was, that everything was regulation for the insurance company. And so I was standing there. I had to film it on my phone, and I watched him step up, and you know he's getting up for the shot, goes up, and I'm thinking to myself, this might go in. And then all of a sudden, you know, the rest is history. The ball goes in. The kid wins the car. It was it was pretty cool. So that was one of the you know crowd goes crazy. It was it was a pretty cool moment at USC Aiken. Working on that something you want to do for here on out, or like what's your end goal? Do you that's uh, that's the goal. Uh, I'm currently enrolled in a master's program. I'm working towards my master's at, in sports administration. Um, you know, I'd like to take it kind of to the next level uh, as far as you know, associate AD, AD to another school. Um, just really seeing uh, the enjoyment that the athletes get out of it and uh, the other aspects of athletics. You know, it's not all just the glitz and glamour of of D1 and football and all that stuff. I mean, these are these are kids that are really, you know, making long-lasting friendships and, um, you know, excelling in sports and, and getting an, an added uh, bonus to their collegiate career. So, um, being involved in that seems like a really exciting and entertaining thing that I'd like to to keep going. So, yeah, hopefully that's where that's where it takes me. But you know, who knows? We'll see. Who do you think's gonna win the Stanley Cup? Dallas Stars, man. Really? Yeah, think I think so. I think so. Lightning have choked the last couple of years, so. <laughs> I think the stars do it. They did. They did. But they didn't win, ga didn't win game. Didn't win game one though. That's for 